When two thin lenses are assembled and placed one against the other, they behave like one unique lens. And this equivalent lens has a focusing power that is called the equivalent focusing power, and that is equal to the sum of the individual focusing powers. Therefore, it would be P1 plus P2 if we assemble two lenses with focusing power P1 and P2. This, of course, is strictly equivalent to saying that 1 over the equivalent focal length is 1 over F1 plus 1 over F2. And the nature of the equivalent lens depends on the individual focusing powers and which one is the biggest. So let's say that we assemble two converging lenses right next to each other. Well then, this is obviously going to be equivalent to one single converging lens because P1 and P2 are positive, therefore P equivalent is positive and the equivalent lens is a converging lens. With the same logic, if we assemble two diverging lenses next to each other, then they will behave as one diverging lens because P1 and P2 are both negative, therefore P equivalent is negative, and the equivalent lens is a diverging lens. It gets trickier when we choose to assemble one converging lens and one diverging lens. And then we're not quite sure. It depends. It depends on which lens has the greatest focusing power because that one will take over and dictate what the nature of the equivalent lens is. Say, for example, that we take F1 is equal to 10 centimeters, and that is a converging lens, the first one. The second one is a diverging lens, and it's minus 5 centimeters. Well, then the equivalent focusing power is going to be 1 over F1 plus 1 over F2. That's 1 over 0.1 minus 1 over 0 0.05, which is 1 over 0.1 minus 2 over 0.1, and therefore it's minus 1 over 0.1. In other words, it's minus 10 centimeters. And the equivalent lens is a diverging lens. And that makes sense because F1 had a greater focal length, but therefore a smaller focusing power. And F2 had a greater focusing power and dictated that the equivalent lens should be a diverging lens.